Hello guys, welcome again to my YouTube channel DevOps Tech Stack, where I am sharing all the knowledge from scratch to become a DevOps engineer. I hope you all are doing good. In this video, you will learn all about GitHub with practical demo. If you like the video, do comment and subscribe to the channel. In my, in my next lecture, I will go through the important concept for Git. But for now, let's focus on GitHub. So this is the overall agenda for today's video. That is, what is GitHub? Why we are using GitHub? And how to create a GitHub repository, save the file in that particular repo? And what is fork? The first question, what is GitHub? So GitHub is actually a web-based platform used for version control. Now you must be thinking, what is version control? So it is actually the practice of tracking and managing the changes to a software code. So in short, GitHub is a software that is being used for the version control. Let's say for example, a software developer team wants to build a website like Amazon. Okay. And every member in the team has to update their code changes simultaneously while working on the project. In this scenario, GitHub helps them to build a centralized repository where everyone can upload, edit, and manage the code files. GitHub document all the changes done by each developer in an organized manner without any conflict. It has a great visual interface. So now at this point, I hope you are now clear with what is GitHub and why we are using GitHub. Now let's create a GitHub repository. So repository is like a storage space where your project lives. You can keep any files, code or images here. To create a GitHub repository, you first need to create an account in the GitHub. Let's try that out. Go to github.com site. Now here you need to click on the sign up option. If you are creating the account for the first time, click on sign up. Here you need to enter your email address with which you want to create your account. Let's say I'm entering any email address. Next click on continue. Here you need to create a random password and note it down because it will be used in our next video to configure Git. Now finally click on the continue option. In the next page, it will ask for the username. You can enter that. Once your account is created, the page will look like this. So in my case, I have the account already created. So I will directly log into my account that is github.com. So for my case, I have the username as kritika-git. Okay. Now we need to create a new repo. Whenever you are trying to create a new repo, here we have two options. That is the public and private, private one. Private you can select if you don't want to share your code with others. Now let's give some name to our repo. Let's say I'm giving DevOps, DevOps project. Okay, I'm also creating a private one. Now click on the create a new repository option. Okay, it is telling the Devo repository DevOps project already exists. I will just give some other name, DevOps project one. Now I'm creating it as a private one. Now the next option is the add a readme file. So you can enable it also and you can keep the default one also. So what is actually the readme file? It's like a plain file where you enter the description on how to run your code or any other information you want to share with the end user. Next is the git ignore option. This option also you can enable or you can keep the default. It is like it will create a git ignore file. Okay. So this concept in detail I will discuss in my next lecture where I will explain about git because it is related to that concept. Now finally click on the create repository option. Okay. For now I have enabled the readme file and click on the create repository. So you have this project. Okay. Once your repo is created, you can create a new file from the UI itself. Like we can create add file, create a new file. I am creating some test.sh file. Here you can give any description why you are committing this change, what this change consists of, anything you can keep it. And we are committing it into the main branch. I will explain later what is what do you mean by branches also or whether you can create a new branch also for this commit. But for now, I'm just committing my changes in the main branch itself. Now click on commit new file. Now your first repository in GitHub is created. Now let me give a brief on the different options available in GitHub UI. First is branch. By default, branch is main where your actual running code is placed. 
If a developer works on enhancement of that code, he or she will create his own branch and commit his changes over there. I will show the demo of this in my Git lecture. For now, our repo is just having one branch that is main. Next is issues. What is issues? Here team can create any issue related to your code for tracking like some any kind of bug or any enhancement in the code. Now next is pull request. It's a concept where you tell others about changes you have pushed to your branch in a repository on GitHub. If, if that changes looks good to the developer, then your changes will be merged to the main branch. Okay. One more important option is fork. It is a copy of a repository that you manage. Forks let you manage to a project without affecting the original repository. If you want to copy someone else's repo code onto your own repo, then you can fork his repo onto yours. How to do that? Let's say I am into some another public repo that is in this Niranjan one. So what I can do, I can fork this particular repo into my repository. How to do that? Click on the fork option. Here you need to select your username that is Kritika-git for me. Then I am specifying, I just want to copy the master branch, then click on create fork. Now, as you can see, that particular code from Niranjan repo is forked onto your Kritika-git, my username, okay? I hope you are now clear why we use GitHub. Do let me know in the comment section if you have any queries. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in my next lecture for Git. Till then, stay happy, stay healthy.